I now give the floor to Mr. Vladimir Voronkov. Mr. President, Excellencies, it's an honor to brief the Security Council on the 19th report of the Secretary General on the threat posed by Daesh to international peace and security and the United Nations efforts in support of member states to counter this threat. I am pleased to be joined by Assistant Secretary General and Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Committee Executive Directorate, Ms. Natalia German, to present this report, which was prepared jointly by our offices and the analytical support and sanctions monitoring team. As we approach the International Day of Remembrance of and tribute to the victims of terrorism on 21st August, I would like to express my condolences to member states that have been affected by acts of terrorism and my sympathy to the victims and their families. In honor of this day, the United Nations Office of Counterterrorism will organize a high-level event to highlight the role of victims of terrorism as peace advocates. My office will continue to support member states in promoting survivor-centered, gender-sensitive, and human rights-compliant approaches. Mr. President, Excellencies, unfortunately, the situation in parts of Africa has not improved since my last briefing. The terrorism landscape in West Africa and the Sahel remains challenging and complex. Terrorist groups continue to expand in the Sahel and inflict high casualties, undermining regional stability. Two of the Daesh affiliates in the region, the Islamic State West Africa province and the Islamic State in the Greater Sahel, have expanded and consolidated their areas of operations. Should these groups extend their influence in northern littoral states, a vast territory stretching from Mali to northern Nigeria could fall under their effective control. In other parts of the continent, Daesh affiliates have increased their operational pace in northern Mozambique, as well as in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo, where a dramatic increase in terrorist attacks resulted in high civilian fatalities. Also in Somalia, the Daesh affiliate has become stronger. Mr. President, Excellencies, two of the risks outlined in reports over the past years have regrettably become manifest since my last briefing. The first is the risk of ISIL-K, the Daesh affiliate in Afghanistan, carried out terrorist attacks abroad. ISIL-K has improved its financial and logistical capabilities in the past six months, including by tapping into Afghan and Central Asian diasporas for support. The group has also intensified its recruitment efforts. The activity of Daesh and other terrorist groups in Afghanistan remains a significant concern. We must unite to prevent Afghanistan from once again becoming a hotbed of terrorism. In this regard, the efforts of neighboring member states to counter and prevent the spread of threat emanating from Afghanistan is very important. The Office of Counterterrorism will continue to support member states in Central Asia in implementing the United Nations global counterterrorist strategy. The second risk that has materialized in the reporting period refers to the resurgence of Daesh core. The group has claimed responsibility for the attacks conducted by ISIL-K globally, seeking to derive propaganda value for this cause. In early January, the group demonstrated its continued global intent, launching a coordinated, coordinated campaign across all its self-proclaimed 
provinces. This included temporary surges of operations in January and March in Iraq, where operations had been otherwise largely contained. Daesh has also increased its operational pace in the Syrian Arab Republic with a surge of attacks, especially in the central desert area. Sustained counterterrorism efforts will be required to prevent Daesh from building upon these gains. Further efforts will also be required to address the dire security, humanitarian and human rights situation of camps and other detention facilities in the northeast of the Syrian Arab Republic. Some progress made by member states in repatriating their nationals resulted in a slight decrease in the population of these camps. However, thousands of individuals continue to live in their conditions. The camps are overcrowded, lacking in adequate shelter and basic services, including clean water and medical care. The Secretary General continues to call for member states with, with their nationals stranded in these camps to scale up their efforts to facilitate the safe, voluntary and dignified repatriation of their citizens. Elsewhere, the threat posed by ISIL-K resulted in heightened threat levels in Europe. The group is considered the greatest external terrorist threat to the continent. Mr. President, Excellencies, cooperation among member states rem remains indispensable to address the threat posed by Daesh. For this reason, the Office of Counterterrorism supported the government of Nigeria in organizing the high-level African counterterrorism meeting in Abuja in April. I welcome the outcomes reflected in the Abuja Declaration and look forward to working closely with member states in supporting the agreed actions. This includes the upgrade of the Nigerian National Counterterrorist Center in Abuja to a regional counterterrorist center that will cover the Sahel and West Africa. Given the complexity of the threat in the region, my office is committed to supporting the center's initiative to address the drivers of terrorism and violent extremism conducive to terrorism. Looking ahead, the Office of Counterterrorism is jointly organizing with the government of Tajikistan and Kuwait the Dushanbe High Level Process Conference in Kuwait City in November. The event will be the fourth iteration of the Dushanbe process and is intended to broaden the scope and impact of regional counterterrorism cooperation well beyond Central Asia. But cooperation alone will not suffice unless it leads to responses that are comprehensively and firmly grounded on political strategies. While well, responses may sometimes require the legitimate use of force, such force must be aligned with broader strategies. These strategies should be aimed at addressing the multifaceted drivers of terrorism and violent extremism conducive to terrorism. And such responses must be fully compliant with international human rights and humanitarian law. Mr. President, Excellencies, terrorism remains a significant challenge for the international community that no state can tackle alone. To eradicate the terrorist threat, we need inclusive multilateral responses that are firmly grounded on political strategies compliant with international law, also informed by all of society and all of government approaches. The upcoming Summit of the Future represents a critical opportunity for member states to recommit to countering terrorism and preventing violent extremism 
along those lines. The Office of Counterterrorism, including through the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Coordination Compact, will continue to support and work in partnership with member states to realize that vision. I thank you.